A power amplifier is an electronic device that has been designed to raise line level audio signals to speaker level. Now, in a typical PA system, the inputs, microphone, and instruments um, that actually give out very little electrical signals in millivolts. And then, when connected to a mixing console and audio interface, with the help of the preamp circuit, this um, microphone and instrument level signals are raised to line level signal. Even as that, these signals are too small and they are in no way strong enough to drive a loudspeaker. And so the mixer or the other interface is connected to a power amplifier, which does the heavy lifting in being able to raise that line level signal to actually drive a PA speaker. In live sound applications, power amplifiers come in two categories. The first categories are power amplifiers that are integrated into certain devices, like the power amplifiers integrated into powered mixers or guitar cabinets and combos, or the power amplifiers integrated into active loudspeakers. Now, the second categories are power amplifiers that come as standalone devices that are used to drive um, passive loudspeakers and stage monitors. That's what we have here and that's what we'll be focusing on in this video. Power amplifiers, just like analog mixers, have been around for a very long time. And although there are a vast majority of manufacturers, the way they are built and operated are basically the same. And so what I'll be talking about can be applied to almost all power amplifiers out there. If you take a look at the inside of this amplifier, you discover that there are two massive heat sinks and a couple of cooling fans. Now this is because power amplifiers generate a lot of heat and so the heat sinks and the cooling fans are responsible for dissipating the heat. You either find amplifiers that blow air through the chassis from back to front or from front to back. This amplifier blows air from the back and expels the hot air through the front and the sides. When racking power amplifiers, it's very important not to mix those that ventilate from front to back with those that ventilate from back to front. Because when you do this, you essentially be recirculating the hot air within the system. Because those that ventilate from back to front, we eventually give out hot air from the front, which would then be taken in by those that are taking air from the front and vice versa. Power amplifiers generally when they overheat they tend to shut down which ultimately means the end of your show and that of your job so you have been warned. This is a two-channel power amplifier. Most modern power amplifiers used in live sound often come in two channels. Now occasionally you see power amplifiers with four, six or eight channels. Now the first thing you notice here at the front panel is the on and off switch. For some amplifiers you find this at the back or sometimes you won't find it at all. You just plug those amplifiers and they are good to go. Now you have two potentiometers here, one for each amplifier channel. And these actually serve as um, level controls for the amplifier input. And then you have a couple of LEDs here. The first LED here says power and this comes up as soon as the amplifier is switched on. You have a protect LED. Now this LED comes up when the amplifier is, is in some kind of um, trouble, maybe when it's overheating or when the output is overloaded, for example. So what happens is that the amplifier shuts its output and this light comes up just to signal you that there is an issue. Now there's a clip LED here. This LED comes up when the amplifier output is clipping and there's, there's a distortion. And then finally, there's a signal LED. This LED comes up when the amplifier is, um, there is input to the amplifier and then it flashes um, in relation to the input. Now let's check out the back panel of the amplifier. Now this is the input section of the amplifier and this is the output section. For the input, this amplifier uses only XLR connectors for its input. You find other amplifiers that have both um, XLR connectors and quarter range TRS jack connectors. Even some have RCA connectors as well. Now for this power amplifier, the input, uh, that's your output of your mixing console or your audio interface, goes to this channel 1 input or if you're using channel 2, it goes here. And then this is a link. Um, the link actually allows you to daisy chain multiple amplifiers. So if you have just one imp output from your audio interface or your mixing console, and you want to connect it to multiple amplifier. So you connect the first one, the output of your mixing console to the input of this amplifier. And then because the link is actually internally connected to the, the same input, you can actually take the same signal from this link to another amplifier. So it enables you to daisy chain multiple amplifiers. Now let's go to the output session. For this power amplifier and for multiple amplifiers you see out there, you have um, binding posts. Now these are binding posts. This is the output for channel one of the amplifier and this is the binding post output for channel two. Now binding post actually allows you to connect bare speaker wires that there's actually a hole here where you put the wires and then you screw this to hold the wires in place. Um, red positive and the black is ground. Same thing for the channel two. Now, 
if you're not using the binding post, you can actually use the speak on as well. This is the speak on uh, connector. Now, the speak on has become the industry standard for speaker connections. And so, this is the speak on connector for channel one and the speak on connector for channel two. There's a third speak on connector here for bridge connection. Now, this is used when you're um, connecting this amplifier in bridge mono mode. There are a couple of switches here that I used to tweak certain parameters in this power amplifier. Let's take a look at them. Now the first one here says operation mode. Power amplifiers used in live sound today can be configured to operate at three different modes. Stereo mode, parallel and bridge mode. This switch is used to select what mode you want this power amplifier to operate at. More on that later. Now the second switch here is also common to most power amplifiers used in live sound and it takes sensitivity now basically this determines how much gain you want your amplifier to give to you the rest switch are basically some form of processing that's been built specific to this power amplifier there's a 30 hertz high pass and 150 hertz low pass filter here a limiter and a ground loop switch now these are common to um, specific power amplifiers. Power amplifiers are very simple equipment and as long as you don't let them overheat they shouldn't give you any problem at all. It's very important to give power amplifiers due respect. These devices can output insane amount of voltages that can be life-threatening if handled carelessly. For some context, this particular power amplifier can output up to 4000 watts of electrical power into forums when connected in bridge mono mode. That's almost 130 volts and 30 amps of current. You should treat power amplifiers with the same amount of respect as you would treat any live electrical circuit. Give this video a thumbs up if you're getting value from it and please subscribe to help grow the channel. In the next video, I'll be showing how to make a connection between the mixing console, the power amplifier and the loudspeaker. You'll see that video right here. I'm Kelvin, thank you for seeing this video. I'll see you in the next one.